Hi and welcome to the third episode of this series where we look at all wise event types in detail. So far we looked at events that dealt with playing sounds basically, but from now on we're looking at things that do other stuff other than playing sounds, like setting the bus volume or changing the pitch of a sound that's already playing. So far we always needed a play event for the rest of the commands to make any kind of sense, but from now we're looking at things that don't need a play event to make sense, they can just function on their own and make changes to your sound. Uh, we should also look at this window uh, in the event page on the top right here and look at all these parameters because a lot of them are shared. So first of all you can change the event type after you made changes to it which can be useful if you already dialed a lot of stuff in. The target is obviously who is being affected by this command. Uh, the scope is whether game object or global. The delay is the amount of time wise waits before it executes a command after it receives it from the game. And then the fade time works. So basically like here we're executing a command to drop down the ambience bus volume by 12 dB and the fade time is how long it takes for for that to go down and it's linear and you always want to use relative values just because absolute values can fuck with your whole system if you are attenuating or boosting your sounds in other places so here in ambience for example we have this rtpc that the user can control in the menu if they want to turn down the ambiences or they just don't want to listen to it so say the user has that dialed in at minus 40 so if we go to our command and set it to absolute Basically, when we go minus 12, we're actually boosting that ambient sounds, and that's the opposite of what we want to do because we want to create more kind of sonic space for our avalanche to play out. Our ambient is really low endy, so we want to give that space to our avalanche sound, right? And then the avalanche fades in at 0.2 seconds, and the ambience ducks down in half a second, as we saw earlier. So when you use relative values, you always need to keep track of what you did, because if we play that file again, now it'll be minus 24 and so on. So then whenever you stop any event, you then reset that bus volume. Since you turned it down 12, you just turn it back to its initial value. And the reset doesn't have like an amount because it just goes back to the default of whatever you have in your audio tab for the bus and i'm using an s curve and a longer fade time like a 10 second fade time because as we saw our avalanche dies down really slow so we want the ambiences to rise up um, really slow as well whereas when they kick in they kick in very suddenly so this is what the set bus volume and reset bus volume does i never use the set all because that's just like yeah, i don't know kind of risky uh, games can get really big and hectic, so you don't want to tempt the devil that way. <laughs> so next up we have the volume and um, pitch kind of set commands. And they're really useful, like, I don't know if you ever tried to make, like, a pitch uh, envelope in Wise. It can get really annoying, and, like, either you can use an envelope, which means you just have A, D, S, R, or you have to use an LFO, and it's finicky and cyclical, so you may want to create, like, custom envelopes that go up and down, and then up, and then round, and all that stuff. So you can do that by chaining together a set of set voice pitch, and the same thing with voice envelopes. You can use, like, you know, A, D, H, S, R, or whatever it is some kids do. And, uh, you can use this to create a Doppler effect. You can go and use Doppler in your DAW and then bring in a bunch of sounds. But again, we're trying to create as many variations as we can to make the game as cool sounding as possible. So why not use these things that are available to us for free instead of paying for waves and then bringing so many sound assets in. So I'm going to use the this Doppler effect on, my, on the sound of my frog when it falls off the map. And our voice actor obviously kind of did dip down the volume, but we want to kind of emphasize that Doppler because it the camera stops following our character. So we have a fade time of five seconds, uh, turn, setting the voice pitch down 400 cents or four semitones, uh, and we have some volume stuff. Let's look at our sounds in the audio tab. So if we go back to our event, we see that it has a lot of commands. The set voice volume is ducking it down 12 dB over 5 seconds, and the pitch is 400 semitone, or 400 cents in 5 seconds. And we also have a delay time of 1 second, so at the beginning nothing happens for a second, and then like both envelopes kick in. So let's play the event and see how it sounds. Ah! 
Maybe one more variation. Um, and again, since we're working with relative values, don't forget to reset voice volume and pitch. And this time we got to do it on the same event because this is a one shot. So it's not like there's not a stop event for it. So basically what we can do is reset that value before we play anything at the beginning of the event. And then we're just sure that every time it's at the default value, obviously the pitch randomization will apply to it, but you know, it won't keep going 400 semitones down until it's like not sounding like a frog. So you may have noticed that we skipped over one of the event types and that's the post event. And I just thought it'd be cool if we go through the bus volume and voice and pitch together because they're similar. So a post event is basically an event within an event, an eventception if you will. So in our game the earthquake duration is always set at 10 seconds. So I can just use one event to start and stop it. I mean I still have to make the stop event but this saves our programmers time with implementing our stuff. Uh, which is always appreciated on their end. Uh, so let's see how it sounds. So I want the earthquake to come in suddenly and then die off slowly as earthquakes do. So the play event plays the earthquake blend container as well as the rumble sound, which is resets the pitch because you'll see later. And then it also does this reset game parameter with earthquake time, which we'll come back to in a later video. And then there's the post event to stop the earthquake, which wastes four seconds before it does that. And then if we go to the stop earthquake event, it first set the voice pitch down one octave, which is why we have the reset there. And then it releases the envelope, which we'll come back to. And then again, we'll come back to the RTPC. And then it breaks the container, meaning that it just lets the sounds die off and that's how we create our earthquake sound and this again creates so much variation it will be different every time the blend container is different and yet yeah, as you can see the break is also delayed by six seconds so four seconds plus six seconds equal 10 seconds and that's how long our earthquake is every time it occurs so you may be wondering why don't we always use uh, post events and the reason is basically so while our earthquake is always set to be at 10 seconds our avalanche doesn't have a set duration so that duration changes and that duration is way longer so you don't want to have a post event being triggered and then delay it for 30 seconds and it just sits in your RAM for 30 seconds and clogs up resources for no reason. So sometimes you make two events, sometimes one event is way more efficient and again when you use post event your coders will love you because you're kind of doing a little bit of their work for them and taking that weight off of their shoulders. So use them when you can and when it's appropriate. And see you next time. Peace.